Welcome to the meeting of the Community Preservation Committee for January 11th, 2023. Meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with chapter 107 of the acts of 2022 which extended the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, MGL chapter 30A 20 until March 31st, 2023. Meetings are typically broadcast on Frontier Community Access Television or FCAP. Uh, we can call the meeting to order at 6.17. And uh, let me just see what I've got here for members. Lily. Present. Dave. Present. Kathy. Present. Um, my screen's a little dark over here. It's, it's Sean. Present. Yeah. And And Frank. Yep, present. All right, great. Any guests? No, I don't see any. Can imagine why not. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, I guess our first job is to approve the minutes from 1214. I did notice a couple of things. Uh, can you pull those up, Lily? Sure, and share my screen. I can do that. Hang on, sorry. There we go. Y'all can see this, right? I can make it bigger. Let me hide these things. It looks fine to me, but it, whatever. Um, my name is Kathy Sylvester. Yes, uh, that was my first correction. Oh, Kathy Sylvester. And is uh, Ben said he's not going to be here tonight, right? I thought he was going to be here, just wasn't oh. going to be able to take notes, but okay, he hasn't popped in. And then Libby is with an EY, correct? That is correct. Um, and then he, he uh, Saginaw is misspelled down, down in that where Alan asked paragraph. That's an I-N-O-R. <clears throat> Okay. And, and I was Bob. present, by the way. I, I was there. I'm not blessed that I was present. Oh, you're not? Nope. Oh, well, thank you for... Uh, yeah, I I know you were there. Thanks. Uh, so they're good. And then down, just down um, where it says Alan and Lily agreed that the chart should be I think he, no, that's that's fine. I don't have any issues. Yeah, there were that. two. There was like a chart, and then there was a link to the the yeah. walkthrough. And I, this is correct. So um, the um, and so that's exactly what I did. Yeah, as recommended. Okay, great. Does anybody see anything else? No, so, I, I move to approve the minutes as amended. Second. Seconded. All uh, approved can say, uh, raise your hands. I guess it's, I prefer that. Yeah. Aye, aye, aye. Okay, good. Okay, so I can stop sharing my screen. It's approved as uh, amended. Excellent. Um. Then reviewing the application process, I think, you know, if, if, uh, I encourage everybody before these things start coming in to really take a good second look at the application. Um, I assume uh, most of you have, and if you've noticed anything that um, is a problem, um, then by all means let us know. But I think it's in pretty good, sh pretty good shape now. 
And um, I, uh, I think you have the CCI meeting coming up next Monday, correct? Correct. So you or um, someone could be making an announcement again about, about the application yeah. deadlines and process there. Mm -hmm. And I'll probably, I could well be attending that meeting myself. Um, so I can share with you or step in, but uh, uh, it would just be uh, because MA is watching it and I'm not doing anything else or participating, I should say. I, I do have a question about the application process. And I know we went through this last year, but I just want to be reminded. So <clears throat> wearing my chair of senior housing hat, uh -huh. we are going to be submitting an application, which we've actually completed. We're just waiting for the um, contract, the consultant's charge to be able to share it. Yeah. When, when it comes time to review that, I think that I appear as the applicant and I cannot vote on it, correct? Yeah, you probably should uh, recuse yourself. It's, uh, it's, it, it's, you know, the issue usually is wh whether you have a financial, a personal financial um, interest in an application. So if you were happen, if it had, if you were in a butter to a piece of land or you had other Okay. kinds of things going on that's that's the real uh, bottom line for uh conflict of interest okay but i i think you have gray when, hair so i don't know i mean i'm over 55 <laughs> i think you're good yeah and but I, i'm not a think, developer or anything so i got yeah, you okay i think you can also speak speak to it for sure i mean that's yeah. there's no nothing i'd much rather appear as the applicant and no. recuse myself as long yeah. as we have quorum but, but if you uh, uh but but um uh, you know you you really don't have a personal financial interest you uh certainly can vote on it in town meeting and right. all the other things so it's just a matter okay. of thank you being aware of that and it's good that you are aware of that so yeah for general information that is something to to uh, keep in mind if you in, are involved in a particular project you do have to be uh, attentive to that. I, I have been involved with uh, some of the land projects and one of the one of the historical uh, commission projects, and I that's that's just what I did. And I think if there had been not enough votes, I <laughs> would have taken a chance probably and not okay. worried too much about it. All right. Um, so you know we do have this uh, possibility of uh, having to have a. Um, a meeting uh, before the, uh, during April before the before the town meeting, which we still haven't necessarily determined. It has to be there, but we've set a date. Uh, everybody's familiar with the fact that we're primarily going to be meeting in March. And if you do, um, if you do have awareness of a project, maybe that you, um, I'm, I'm trying to think of how best to do this. Um, uh, you can certainly refer people if if people have mentioned uh, that they are applying uh, for a project and it's before the March 1st deadline. You can certainly consult with uh, Lily or me about, um, you know, some kind of preliminary basic information they might need, because uh, sometimes there's just some of those issues uh, can come up about people asking a, a question and there's not a problem with that, preferably by email and not by phone calls, I think, for in both of our cases. Um, the, the, do, any, do any of you have any questions about, about the process? I know, Kathy, you've come into this a little bit late, but... Yeah, you I muted it or... to me a little bit, I suppose, because I have no idea. Sorry, I couldn't. I couldn't hear you. But I said you could explain the process again to me if you did last meeting. I sorry, I forgot. I have no idea. <laughs> All right. Well, very very briefly, um, you know that uh, we've got these basic criteria of his, uh, historic preservation, or no, no, it's it's called historic resources, open space and recreation, community housing are the three major 
actually there are four because open space and recreation are really kind of on some on some level at times separate. And um, so everyone should be downloading their applications electronically, filling them out electronically, submitting them electronically. And uh, so the first first deadline is March 1st. I don't have the other dates in front of me, but I think there's a March 15th approximately. And then that's the one month where we have two meetings on March 29th. And the, the first one is primarily for people who have submitted, but who would like to be present when we first open up the applications and uh, begin to take a look. And uh, if they also that at that point have some que uh, questions or are looking for some feedback on some particular aspect, we, we, that it wouldn't be a time when we'd really be trying to uh, do a lot of helping them uh, change, change the project, but we would be wanting to do that on our, our own during that, I mean, have time during that meeting to begin to, to look at those. As soon as they come in, we should be notified, I think by Pat Kroll in the town hall, um, and I'm supposed to be receiving a copy too, which I'm hoping will be the case, and um, I can start alerting you to those and sending them around in, in, in the, our, our email exchanges. I don't think that's a problem with open meeting laws for me to be distributing the proposals because in so, the past you would just normally be picking them up at the town hall. Paper. What about if we um, put them up in a repository so that what you do is you email a link to everybody um, like I, I I have a CPC repository where I'm putting up that's where like the minutes were and stuff. So that in do in where, where is it? In Google it's Docs? In a Google, yeah. Drive, in a Google Drive, yeah. And um, um if it's up there, then it, I mean, because they are public documents for everybody anyway. And so they that's can right. they can be viewable, but only editable by the people in this committee yes and so we can edit and make suggestions <laughs> all in one document instead of emailing things around and around and everything that's excellent going. that's excellent and, and it would uh you know it would keep it all as public as possible and it would keep totally us from, public yeah and in uh, one place. inadvertently starting to communicate and uh that's a terrific idea and i'm glad and i knew you <laughs> yes <laughs> That's All right, so I will I will create a um a folder that's called applications, and um each application will probably have its own folder because if people do as we've done at senior housing is you have many supporting documents and you have pictures right. and and you have letters of support and stuff like that. So each folder will be named for the application. I, I will send everybody a link and we'll, I'll create the folders as we go along. I don't, I don't know the answer, but one thought is it may be the case that we shouldn't be like marking up these documents and leaving comments in them for each other. Because it seems to me that could be a serial delib deliberation under the open meeting law. You know, like we can't yeah. deliberate as a group outside of meeting, but Alan can't call me and say, hey, Dave, what do you think of this? No, and then, yeah. you know, I phone call Lily. What do you think of that? That's also barred. So I don't know if, well, if Google it's Doc. if if it's in the Google Doc and everybody can see all the comments, including the public. Is that I mean, it then really it's just um doing edits as suggestions so they're um you know it'll be thing and it will be things like um we need more specifics for this very often it's like we this this needs more specifics or this data is old and they should go and get more so i don't know um but i don't know about that it's a good point it is i i uh I think, I mean, certainly we should all be aware that uh, if we do make any kinds of uh, comments on these documents as they uh, sit in a public access uh, repository, those comments should not be judgmental. Um, they should be just 
saying this seems to be lacking a piece of information. Um, this seems to be missing. I think those would be the kind of uh, mm. th things that, that we should only be doing there. And even when we publicly review these in the, in the meetings, that's our, our, our real goal is to help the applicant organization and the person sponsoring the application to just get the information they need and um, you know, not be, uh, it, we're, we're definitely responsible for telling somebody that it, would do, it doesn't seem to fit the, the criteria and uh, the guidelines of the Community Preservation Act. But beyond that, uh, you know, we all have to be. So to... it, it, do the open meeting laws apply, I mean, at this level, if we're not making any decisions, Correct. We're merely making comments. Um, Dave, do you know? Well I, well, I don't know the answer in this circumstance, but I mean, it applies to deliberating. So it, it's, you know, you don't have to make a final decision. Like I said, you could violate it if Alan called me and I called you and, you know, you called Kathy and like yeah. that would be a violation <laughs> as well. So it, it's about the deliberation. But I, I don't know. I, I don't know how it applies in this circumstance. Yeah, we just thought, yeah, I think we would huh. just all want to not be, I mean, that's that's one of the things we would be avoiding by this system as well, is we don't need have the need to sort of say, oh, did you see so-and-so's proposal and start having any kind of uh, yeah. conversation uh, on email that, um, or phone for that matter, that would be. Well, then maybe we shouldn't put our editing comments in the document though. Um, but just make our own comments separately. I don't know. I'm worried. I mean, I just don't know. It seems kind of nutty. I think maybe, maybe that is the the, the more uh, judicious way to do it. It would be that we're they're going to come in on the first. We'll distribute them. Mm -hmm. They'll be up there, and we'll we'll not really have any verbal interaction until until the meeting the meeting of the fifteenth. And at the meeting, we can make the edits in there, and then that would be in. Yeah. All right. Let me ask a question. Do people, um, just in terms of the edits and the comments, do people have the opportunity to supplement these applications? You know, if we say, oh, this date is old, can they then come back to us and say, hey, look, we, yeah, oh, great. Okay. Yeah, exactly. That, that, that's why we have those two dates, mm -hmm. is that ideally what happens is people come in, they get some feedback, and they say, oh, I'm I'm missing that. I can get it to you, or um, yeah, I can I can explain that better, or or whatever it happens to be, and then that ideally would be that that um, they would um, then have a revised uh, copy for the end of March, and at worst the beginning of April. That's great. Yep. Okay, so let's agree that that should be the uh, the process, and and um, and I think we'll we'll be we'll be in good good shape. And it, it probably is better not to start putting uh, comments uh, written into the uh, proposals um, while they're online. So I suppose they could even be PDFs, Lily, right? I, but um, I don't know how. Oh yeah, but you can edit PDFs. But I think well, we're I better, off, better <laughs> off making them be docs, so that when we're in the meeting, that's going to be yeah. At, you know, we can make the actual updates on the doc or notes in the doc. Yeah. In the meeting that says, you know, John Doe will be updating this data. And that way, then when they come back and we're, and we're reviewing with them again, we'll say, oh, you, you said you were going to update this data, but I don't see it. So you know what right. I mean? We'll keep it yeah. in there. Good. And it's really not our job to do editing in the sense of making it a better document uh, from the standpoint of syntax or grammar or, you know, that's not our job. We don't have to check spelling. We don't have to do anything. And in fact, that would be inappropriate. Um, what we're just trying to do is get the proposal complete enough and sufficient enough that it can be forwarded uh, for consideration at town town meeting and that a warrant article can, can be written. So any other questions about that then? 
Um, that was helpful. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Glad to do it. Um, so then we uh, re review uh, outreach outreach notifications. I think we're we're going to hit uh, CCI pretty well. So, and uh, that can happen <clears throat> this next Monday. Then those boards really and committees can take the responsibility to nudge people or <clears throat> ask people really, are you really going to get your proposal in on time or uh, aiming to at least and uh, kind of get a get a sense then of where we are with uh, the applications. And I have sent just as of today, in fact, a, a blurb to FCAT to post that uh, starting anytime from now until uh, the 16th of uh, January, I hoped for, for the latest. And then that will be up there through March 1st as a reminder to folks who uh, watch meetings on FCAT or, or uh, you know, are looking there. Um, oh, and I, I had a thought. Um, I, I serve as the elector under the will of Oliver Smith, which I may have mentioned. Yeah, yeah. I post in Deerfield now from time to time, um, telling people to, if if they're refinancing a mortgage or something, to consider um, doing it through the electors. And I will tell you that we just got the largest mortgage request from Deerfield because of that. And it's really exciting because we're really going to be able to up our um, grants because of it. Um, but anyway, I say that to say that F Deerfield now, people yes. actually read it and it actually works. So what do you all think if I were to post there um, something along the lines of um, the community preservation, the CPC deadline is March 1st. Wonder if you have a project that is eligible for funding? Check this link and be sure to apply if you're a candidate. And then link to that FAQ that we actually also have in the application. <laughs> what do you all think of that? I think it's great. Yeah. I think it's very good. All right, I'll do that. And I'll even do it tonight, right after our, our meeting um, okay. with some sort of a, a picture of somebody handing out money or something. <laughs> That always gets people's attention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, not to be too uh, yeah, well. Um, that that would be great. And um, okay, uh, I don't. I get on Facebook very very rarely, and I never virtually ever comment or post or uh, do anything. But I'll also put the word out. Uh, I'll I'll alert people here. I know uh, in the Sugarloaf community, although really. You know, if you're an organization that's not a, a, a town, doesn't have a town um, uh, affiliation. And so in other words, if you're not a committee or a board of the town or some some official capacity and you're, you're a, an organization, there are organizations, for example, I was just thinking of this today, the, his, uh, the 350th committee um, and I sent an email to them also, just kind of uh, alerting them to the fact that I'm kind of in a way surprised that I haven't heard anything from them, but I have heard from John Novi from the Historical Commission about something that they, within the Historical Commission, but those are two separate in entities and the 350th committee would be logical to be uh, capable of submitting a proposal on a historic project and they do have a town, the blessing of the town, of course, and they also, I'm assuming, are interacting with the historical commission. So something like that. But, um, but it just uh, sometimes organizations feel like they can possibly submit for funding. Did did we talk about this? That there, you know, there may be some precedents that we should look into. Uh, uh, I was thinking about this, but uh, for the most part. You you know that's that's your that's the people who are going to be submitting. Yeah. Any updates by anyone who's heard of anything coming that we aren't kind of already aware of? Housing historical commission. I, I suppose it's the select board that would be coming in for the uh, 1888 project. Yeah, I think I mean I think Julie Chalfant is heading it. Yeah. Up. But I think it's it, it, it would it, be the sponsor. 
Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, and I'm quite sure we do not have any applications uh, as as yet. Um, so we don't have to really worry about that. The, the other thing that came up, and I can't remember whether I, I think I just circulated this uh, to Lily was the question was raised about how much money do we have for this year? And uh, the most recent information that I have is from the end of the fiscal year. So that would be July, I mean, June 30th, 2022. And that was provided uh, to me from by Brenda Hill in the uh, accountant's uh, office, and the the uh, numbers look pretty good. Um, I said I I thought it was around two million. It's actually two million two hundred sixty six thousand. Well, round it up to two hundred sixty seven two million two hundred sixty seven thousand um, <clears> dollars. <throat> We did get a match a notification from, from the Community Preservation Coalition that we did get a December match, which was uh, something that needed to be signed by the governor before he uh, left office. And it did come through and Deerfield got a 100% match for um, this last uh, you know, cycle of funding. And so that's really good. I don't know how whether any of that money, I don't think that may be available in this round. I'll have to ask Brenda, but that would knock it up, uh, uh, yeah, some, maybe even somewhat significantly in terms of a $100,000 or so. I, I I think I have a sheet that I can check that gave me that number. But um, I, anyway, I don't think we should count on that. But the other thing to be alerted to is that you in each round, each year, there's a mandatory set aside for the three categories. And so this would be for the Historic Preservation Fund. I think you're obligated to, to take a minimum of 5% from the budget of that year uh, for each of these categories, historic uh, preservation or um, projects, the community housing, and the uh, open space and recreation. So there's money sitting in those accounts and that'll accumulate and roll over from year to year. So of that 2 million, there's, um, uh, let's see, I think that's on this sheet right here. There's uh, 25,000 in open space because we've used quite a bit of that over the years. There's a little over 60,000 for historic resources. And for community housing, there's a very nice $559,000 because at town meeting, again, something that uh, Lily was very actively involved in, uh, set aside some money knowing that we were gonna be coming in fairly soon and to make sure that we had a, a real chunk of money to do some significant uh, applications for these projects now that are beginning be going to be uh, coming to the town. So that uh, really leaves a, a million five hundred and seventy nine thousand plus a little bit for that's actually out there for the projects to be funded this year that uh, don't don't have the set asides. <clears throat> and the set asides um, people can apply, for example, the Historical Commission could apply for more than their 60,000. That doesn't mean that they can't apply for more. It just means that that's their kind of limit. So I have let John Novi and the, of the Historical Commission and the 350th Committee, for example, to be aware that the, those funds are, are there. Kathy has her hand raised, Alan. Okay, Kathy. Oh, yeah. I just want to make sure I understand. So of the two million some odd dollars, sixty thousand of that money is has to be set aside for historic preservation. It's already yes, it's it's available, but it's it's got to be targeted for that category. And it comes out of that two hundred, I mean two million two hundred and sixty seven thousand. Yes. Okay. And the Deerfield got a hundred percent match of what? 
I, well, um, there's, there's, you know, when you when you vote when the when when a town votes for to approve the uh, Community Preservation Act for their community, you can go in at diff three different percentages. You can go a high of three percent, uh, two percent, or one percent if it passes. And the, we've always argued in in Deerfield that the three percent is really does make the most sense because there's uh, so two and sometimes three rounds of money as the state knows what the revenues are looking like and what the real estate activity is and so on that, that helps provide that, that revenue. Um, they, they distribute more money. And if you're 1%, you just get that first match. So that might be say uh, a 50% or a 60% match. It's probably even going to be going down as more towns adopt this and bigger cities. Um, and then there's a second round and then you get another percent, which might take you, if, if you were lucky, up to 75 or 80 percent of, uh, of what uh, the, the town has raised in, in revenue from their, their property taxes. And then the final round is only goes to the three percenters. And that, that then gives you 100 percent of what was potentially available for a match. And there, and what do we take in in one year for the town of Deerfield? Sorry, sorry. How much do we take in in Deerfield in one year, average? I mean, um, that's a little hard for me to say. It's been going up, of course, quite considerably because of the amount of housing activity. Uh, you know, the, for every real estate transaction that is uh, a home, there is that tax. Uh, with with an exemption of the first hundred thousand dollars of the price of the property, um, you know, so the, of what we collected in twenty twenty two, we got a hundred percent match on that money. Yes. Okay. Yes, that's. I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, that's a, very clearly stated. That's 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 what happens. I think in that email that you sent from Stuart Saginaw that there was a link to a spreadsheet that had all the towns and what they got. Yes, so, I have that. I just didn't, I didn't uh, print it out and I'd have to. Yeah, but I think, I mean, you send it to everybody, Kathy, if you got that email. Oh, I did send it to everybody. Go. Yeah, you, you can. Um, it was an attachment uh, and I think it gave the number. Oh, thank you. I'll look back in the email. That would have been probably what two or three weeks ago. Yeah, that sounds about right. Since the last meeting. Yeah. So. Uh, any other comments? Any other appropriate new business that we need to uh, consider tonight? Well, if not, then um, I think we're. I would I would move that we adjourn. <laughs> Second. All right. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Oh, the next meeting, just to confirm. Next meeting. Yeah. February eighth, and um, we said again that it would be at six fifteen. Just to remind everybody. Thank you.